know I sound unhappy this morning, and I am. I don't know what we're waiting for, America. Maybe Susan has some answers for us. We'll bring her on. I, I, I don't get it. I know what the country's sitting here waiting for. It's like... Susan's one person who I will admit has taken the bull by the horns and changed some things for her area. Quite astoundingly, I might add. Good morning, Susan. Are you with us? I can't hear you. Are you on with my phone? I can hear you on the radio. Okay. Well, you got. You can't hear me on your phone? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, but I'll go ahead. Go ahead. My city is only about 2,000. My city is only about 2,000. But I bug the city hall, the police, the school, and I try to share with them everything that I know. And you're right, they don't listen, but I'm not going to stop. Well, I don't disagree with you, and I've been doing it for and years, and I, I'm, I'm grateful and appreciative of the fact that you have done this for as long as you have. And I, I understand you were not a person who was an activist uh, a couple of years ago. And I, I applaud and I, I'm, I'm encouraged daily by your example. I just don't see enough Americans doing it. Are you still with us? There may be more doing it and not telling you to. Well, perhaps so. But, I mean, I, I, I'm, what I see around us is a nation that is collapsing on itself and is not even willing to, I mean, it's not even willing to, to attempt to save itself. Well, I'm on it today. Have a good day. Thank you. You know... I admire Susan very, very much. I'm just going to tell you her story, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. But Susan is a girl that um, started listening to our program a couple of years back. I was going to talk this morning about the faces of the NSA's facial recognition database, but she was a person who um, was working, uh, you know, uh, or, or listening to our program, and she began working within her own community to go to the school board to... Um, go to and, and monitor and let, let the city council and the police department and the school boards and local politicians know that she was watching them and that she was paying attention. She goes to school board meetings and some nights she's the only person there. Most nights. She fought Common Core. We've been fighting Common Core as parents. And I, I'm encouraged when I see a person like Susan step up. But when I see the rest of America who's more interested in, you know, chasing after the latest iPod or whatever it is that, 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 that catches their interest or afraid to stand up and speak because they're afraid that they're going to be ostracized at work or... Let me tell you something, America. This radio program has the cost of this has kept me from financial benefit. It's kept me from obtaining work and jobs. It's cost me three years of my life in a federal penitentiary. It cost me then three years of being monitored by some person who made me pee in a cup over a gun deal that they manufactured. Why would you make me pee in a cup if, if this wasn't a, if it was a, a charge over over failure to pay a tax on a gun? It's all a game, and I don't see enough Americans willing to stand up and do what's right. I just don't. I mean, everybody's got to be able to survive and make a living. I get it. But when I see what is happening in, in our country and the unwillingness of those who are, are required 
and, and their acquiescence to it. I mean, that's what this thing about the NSA's facial recognition database was about. I mean, they people know. And they still, they post up their pictures to Facebook. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the matter with you? Why would you give the enemy ammunition? But be afraid to speak out. You're giving them ammunition to hurt you. And then you say, well, I don't want to be on a list. You're already on a list. You're on a list because you weren't born into the right family. And you don't work in Washington. And you're not connected or tied to a lobbyist somewhere. And even if you work for a transnational, you ain't in the board. And you're not one of the mega investors. So you're not part of the aristocracy. And you're not part of the political oligarchy. So who and what are you? I'll tell you what you are. You're a victim! And I don't care what color you are. I don't care whether you came across a border legally or illegally. I don't care whether you were born of American parents. I don't care whether you were born, your parents were born into slavery. I don't care whether you think you were born into slavery now. You have been born into slavery. And when given the chance to leave the plantation, you refuse to allow the key to be placed into the handcuffs to release them and free you. It's as if you would sit there and say, no, 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 no. Keep that key away from my cuffs. I don't want my cuffs taken off. And your benefactor says, well, why not? By taking off those cuffs, you can leave. I know, but I got clothes here, and I get three meals a day. <laughs> yeah, but the clothes you're wearing smell. And they're torn. And your children are taken from you. Are you that afraid of the unknown? that you're willing to live like that? Apparently, you are. And this is, I guess, to a certain extent, a direct indictment of everybody that hears this program. If you are not actively fighting this, and I mean fighting it on a day-in and day-out basis with every fiber of your being, irrespective of the cost, Visions are out there that keep you separate. I saw an email from somebody who posted it up on our Facebook page, Mark uh, my, uh, Walter w Whiteman. And he's 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 very heavy into the idea of you know the Barack Obama is not a qualified candidate, and he opens this email by saying, short of fully automatic weapons and explosives, I want law-abiding citizens to be just as well armed as a criminal may be in committing a crime. I also believe guns are a deterrent to a tyrannical government. He says, I, he starts it open, with, he opens with, I believe in the Second Amendment, short of fully automatic weapons and explosives. I'm sorry, you're wrong. Dead, absolutely, 1,000% wrong. You can sit there and rail about a Barack Obama having a social security number that's out of Connecticut when he never lived in the state and he's got a fake this and a fake that. I don't disagree with any of that. But when you tell me that you believe in the Second Amendment short of fully automatic weapons and, and explosives, that's the end of the discussion right there because we can't go any further. Why? 
Are you dangerous with explosives or fully automatic weapons? Would you be? Would you? I mean, if somebody dropped a pound of C4 off on your front door and said, here, this is for you, would the community have to worry about you? I mean, would you be out trying to figure out how to shape a charge to get into the local bank that night? Is that real? Is that a real concern? If you had a fully automatic weapon, would you use it less responsibly than you would use a semi-automatic weapon? I'm asking you, yes or no? But you separate yourself. You draw your own dividing line. You split your own defensive line. For what? To what end? Well, I can't agree with anybody who doesn't believe in anti-abortion. Great. So you're a pro-lifer who's so pro-life that you're going to abandon the principles of the nation that is pro-life. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Can you hear me? Caller, can you hear us? Caller, can you hear us? Apparently not. I guess they couldn't hear us. I don't know. Caller, can you hear us? All right. I don't know what's up with that phone line. America, where, at what point are you going to step up to the plate and say, we've had enough? I know most people say, well, what am I supposed to do? I'll tell you what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to say, I'm done. And you're supposed to get every person that you know and every person that you work with and every person that you are friends with and every person in your circle of influence and say, we collectively are going on strike. And I don't care if we have to help each other out with some food. I don't care what we've got to do. I don't care if I've got to allow you and your family to come stay with me and my family. Because you're going to be doing that soon enough anyway. The only difference is you're going to be doing it while people are chasing you around in soldiers' uniforms, either our own or the United Nations or whomever, and they're going to be chasing you around looking for you. But whatever it is that you're thinking, it's, I mean, <laughs> whatever it is that you're thinking, America, you've got to take a serious look at this and decide what you're going to do. You're afraid you're going to lose your home, your car, your job. You're going to lose all those things you have accumulated. Do you realize that you're going to lose them all anyway? You think you're going to be able to take the boat with you and you have to leave the community that you live in because riots are happening in the street because the dollar is, you know, got no value left? But the IRS is knocking on your door, and you got the EPA who's jacked your electricity up so much that you can't afford to pay the mortgage because your electric bill is the equivalent of your mortgage. I get it. you got to have some resources to be able to do that. But if you got a big screen TV in your house then maybe you need to reanalyze your priorities, huh? If you're driving a brand new vehicle and you've got a 
three or a nine or six hundred dollar a month vehicle payment for a, a truck. Maybe you need to prioritize. I'm seeing I'm seeing the tipping point has been way over reached a long time ago. And I don't see America doing anything about it. I'm sorry, by the way, caller. I can't apparently bring you on, so I'm not quite sure what the issue is. But I apologize that I cannot seem to bring you on the air. See, the, the, the real problem here, America, is that for whatever reason, you are unwilling to do what's necessary. I can't tell you what that is. You already know. You already know. You already know. I'm asking you to tell me what you're going to gain from what's going on right now in your country. I mean, I posted an article this morning how Planned Parenthood is sending letters out. And they're using the Bible to justify abortion. They're issuing a pastoral letter. <laughs> I kid you not. It's from Planned Parenthood. It says, Cler uh, Clergy Advocacy Board. Pastoral letter to patients. The decision to have an abortion is personal. Though your reasons may be complicated and private, you're not alone. As religious leaders from a number of religious traditions, we're here to support you in your decision. Are you trying to tell me? Are you trying to tell me that you're listening to, that you're you're uh, you're stating you're trying to use clergy to promote abortion? In America, you're willing to put up with that kind of. I mean. I don't care what your religious beliefs are. Uh, that, that's, that, that's anathema to the principle of self-preservation. You can't have... can't have two masters. You can't have two masters. You got a government that's building databases on you. I talked to you about this many times. I've asked you over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. What is it precisely that you think they're going to do with all this information on you? How's it going to benefit you? Ask yourself that question. Why can you not say, I opt out of all of it? You, you can't you can't you can't ad admit at this point or you can't possibly believe i guess is a better phrase that we are far from the goalpost 
you see once the goal is achieved to set to say okay let's to, let's tighten up our defense now it's too late let's start really playing they just scored another goal i mean how does that make sense how does that make sense I don't know what you're hoping to achieve with that kind of mentality. Can you hear us, caller? Try one more time. Hey, Mike. Yeah, can you hear us, caller? Yeah, I got you. Okay, go ahead. Um, you're on the air. I'm like, um, I've been listening to you this morning, and, you know, it, it's come down to one realization that people are not willing to give, give, up, give up their fortunes. And their property, their materialistic things. They're not willing to pledge their life, their fortune, and their sacred honor? Is that what you mean? That's exactly what I'm saying. You know, I mean, you've got to know where if you served your country, you're deemed a, ter a terrorist. You stand up for who you are. You're, you're what? You're, you're deemed, deemed a terrorist. Yeah. I, I, I mean. So what does it come down to? When, when, when is the breaking and tipping point for the people to stand up and say something where, you know, if anyone actually sits down and reads, they'll find out this little clause in a little article. This is a government becomes corrupt or unjust. People shall take arms and reclaim their government. At what point do we say enough is enough? I, I suspect it won't be until after the goalpost has been breached, when the touchdown's been made, and then the team is going to say, you know what, let's rally our defense now. Well, the game is over, and the game has been lost because you allowed the touchdown to, continue, to, to happen. You can't you can't rally the team after the game is over and the final score has been called. Exactly. How do you it, how do you do that? Where, I mean, how does that make sense? Disgusting. It, it doesn't. It's disgusting at this point. Why? Because everyone wants to go out and buy the next cool TV that has the internet capabilities so they can sit and watch Netflix. Well, actually, so that they can and, uh, sit and watch innocent. Netflix while the NSA sits and watches them. <laughs> I mean, talk about suicide, right? Y you know, you're more interested in making sure you're chasing the latest, the latest NSA tracking device that is out there on the marketplace, which they're using to capture everything about you. I mean, it's it's absurd to me. I I, I just I can't what, what, uh, I can't understand it. What is come What has come down to those that is very ridiculous is is that you know everyone worries about you know. What's going on? But the simple thing is a loss of job. How is that? Is anyone pre truly prepared that, you know, when they start shutting down all these plants, what they're going to do? No, um, and we're going to lose a quarter of a million well, jobs probably in the next year or two uh, over this EPA thing. Well, and, and that's only one of exactly. many. You know, and everybody, everybody gets so concerned with what's going on not within their own home and what their name, what's going on with their neighbors. They're so concerned about, you know, what somebody wore. You know, I've seen an article come up of some woman wearing a T-shirt for a skirt. You know, a, a wife beater. Uh, you know, it, just, it was disgusting for a skirt. Yeah. You know, you see pictures like that on the Internet, and you're like, well, what is this? But that's the newest and greatest thing. But, you know, hey, the new season of... Uh, that goofy little kid that, you know, their mom exploited her. Hey, I'm sorry. We're on a hard break, and this is the... We're going to get cut off. I apologize. I, I couldn't have given you a fair warning. Uh, or fair warning. Uh, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Hey, folks, we are um, going to wrap for the day. I I, I don't I don't mean to, to, you know, blow you guys off with this stuff, but I got to tell you, I, I mean, how much longer can we allow this to go on? 
You've been listening to America's Voice Now. You can communicate with me directly at mike at americasvoicenow.org. That's mike at americasvoicenow.org. You can find our website at americasvoicenow.org directly. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless.